Hello, this is the Bible in Fewer Words. We are Carol and Steve Wells. This is episode 210, the book of Daniel, chapter 2. Hi, Steve. Hi, Carol. I saw in a communique between your office and my office that we are only going to do one chapter of Daniel every episode. It's kind of looking like that's the way it's going to be. Because Daniel is an important book, and it has a lot of stories in them. They tend to be easily separated into chapters. And so I I think it's going to work better if we go with a um, single chapter, at least for the first few episodes. We'll see how it goes in the second part. There are 12 chapters in Daniel, Mm -hmm. and we may end up with 12 episodes. All right. Well, let's try to knock one out today. Okay. Chapter 2. Nebuchadnezzar had bad dreams and couldn't sleep. So he called his magicians, astrologers, and sorcerers and said to them, I had a bad dream. You know, it sounds like a big problem. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, this is not the first time we heard about people having dreams in the Bible, is it? Mm -mm. Yeah, the Pharaoh really had troubles with that. (laughs) Sometimes you tell me about your dreams, and Uh (laughs) I try to show some interest. (laughs) A lot of people place a lot of significance to dreams, which to me seems strange. Mm -hmm. Why anybody would think there'd be any particular importance to dreams. But God agrees with them, and God often communicates with people in dreams. It happens repeatedly in the Bible. Very strange way of communicating. (laughs) Yes, it is. Verse 4. They said to him, Well, tell us your dream, and we'll interpret it for you. The king said to them, No, you must tell me my dream and interpret it for me. That's kind of asking a lot. That's really asking a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Or I'll cut you in pieces and make your homes a dunghill. Okay, I would find a new profession. Well, but in verse 6 it says, If you can interpret it correctly, I'll give you gifts, rewards, and honors. So they answered, No one on earth can tell you what you dreamed. And the king became angry at this and commanded the death of all the wise men in Babylon. (laughs) Okay, that was the wrong thing to say. So a decree went forth that all the wise men must be killed, including Daniel and his companions. That night, God revealed the interpretation of the king's dream to Daniel. How? Oh, in a dream. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Daniel went to Arioch whom the king had directed to kill all the wise men in Babylon, and said, Don't kill the wise men in Babylon. Take me to the king, and I'll interpret it for him. So Arioch took Daniel to the king and said to him, Here's a captive from Judah who can interpret your dream. Notice that it sounds like the king doesn't know Daniel. Yeah. You but know, in the, fact, he saw him and he said, oh, he's so good looking oh, and yeah, so he's best smart. Looking guy. I'm going to make him him and his companions really important and, you know, all that. Uh huh. So verse 26, the king said to him, can you interpret my dream? Daniel said, yes, God put visions in your head about what will happen in the last days. In your dream, you saw a big, bright, terrible image. It had a head of gold, a breast of silver with brass, belly and thighs. Its legs were iron, and its feet were iron and clay. You saw a stone that wasn't cut by human hands, which smashed the image's iron and clay feet. The wind carried the debris away, and the stone that smashed the image became a big mountain that filled the earth. All right, this is a bizarre story. Mm Mm-hmm. Here is the interpretation of your dream, says Daniel. God has given you a kingdom power, strength, and glory. He has made you king of kings. God has given you power over everything. You are the head of gold. After you, there will be another kingdom, inferior to yours. Then a third kingdom, made of brass, that will rule over the entire earth. And a fourth kingdom that will be strong as iron. Like the toes, the kingdom will be divided... And as the toes were part iron and part clay, the kingdom will be partly strong and partly broken. As the iron and clay were mixed, the kingdoms will try to join together through marriage, but the unions will fall apart. Meanwhile, 
God will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, but will destroy all other kingdoms. My interpretation of your dream is absolutely certain. <laughs> That's a good disclaimer there at the end. It's, yeah, yeah, this is all true. Yeah, yeah. perfectly true. Don't, don't, uh, don't question it. So, should I interpret Daniel's interpretation? <laughs> Go right ahead. Okay. I won't kill you if it's wrong. <laughs> Well, what's really going on here is the book of Daniel is being written about three or four centuries after the events that it's claiming to describe here. Okay. And so... Um, if he knows history, he knows what's going to yeah, happen. Yeah, so it's supposed to be a prediction of the future, a, a prophecy about the future. Mm -hmm. Actually, he's telling about the past. Yes. He's telling about things that have already happened that he knows have happened. Okay. And that is that Nebuchadnezzar, he's going to be replaced by the Medes and the Persians, and then they're going to be replaced by Alexander the Great. He's uh -huh. going to come in and conquer the area, and then the generals of Alexander are going to be fighting among the various kingdoms after Alexander's gone. Okay. One of those is Antiochus Epiphanes, and he is the one that is persecuting the Jews in Judea. He desecrated the temple. He put up uh, the statue of Zeus in the temple. He prohibited kosher foods. And he forbid circumcision. Oh. So he was Hellenizing or forcing the Greek culture on the Jews. On the Jews, and they weren't liking it. Mm. A lot of them were going along with it. Some of them weren't. Some of the ones that didn't were the Maccabees, who ended up having a revolt against them. And that's what the book of Maccabees in the Apocrypha is all about. Okay. And so this is being written in that time period when they're being persecuted by the, okay. the Seleucid kings. Yes. And can you explain that word to me? No. <laughs> it, the Seleucid kings are, are a dynasty of kings that, mm -hmm. that would have descended Alexander the Great yeah. after he conquered the area. Okay. And they were also a lot, at various times allied or fighting against the Egyptian Ptolemid kings of Egypt. Okay. And they were intermarrying sometimes to combine kingdoms, you know, to they, form an alliance okay. by marriage. Yeah, that's what he's referring to. They're going to be trying to intermarry to bring their kingdoms together, but that's only going to work a little bit. Then God's going to come. That's the part that is the real prophecy here. It's not a prophecy about our times, about the future. It's a prophecy about what's going on right then in the 2nd and then 3rd century BCE. Hmm. And that prophecy is that you know, all this bad stuff that's going on with the Greeks, mm -hmm. God's going to take care of that. He's going to come and destroy all of them. He's going to replace it with a kingdom that's going to last forever, and, and it's going to be you know, a Jewish kingdom. Uh. It'll be great. <laughs> okay. Now I guess we have to finish the chapter. Yes. <laughs> I just want to say that when you talk about... So now we are on verse... 46. Yes. After King Nebuchadnezzar heard all this, he felt like me, all overwhelmed. He fell on his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded the others to offer sacrifices and sweet odors to him. The king said to Daniel, Your God is a God of gods and Lord of lords. Then the king made Daniel a great man with many gifts and made him a ruler over the entire province of Babylon. Wow, that is a lot of power. Yeah. And Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Sitting in the gate of the king, I guess that's kind of, he's the gatekeeper. He's sort of the, uh, the king's chief of staff. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk, talk to, to the king? got to come through me. <laughs> All right. So I guess his interpretation of the dream was absolutely certain. And King Nebuchadnezzar believed it. Yeah, he knew what he was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the dishonest part of the, of the whole book is that it's being written as though being written four centuries before, and actually it's not, and it, so it's not really a prophecy. Mm -hmm. Well, now we know a little bit more about Daniel and how he rose to his uh, powerful position. Right. All right. Hey, thanks for clearing us up on all that. Sure. And listeners, we'll see you in Chapter 3 of Daniel. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.